Hi, I'm Antonio D'Amico, and this is D&D with a twist. I'll take a D&D thing. Could be a class, could be a monster, could be anything. Give you a rundown of what that is, and then we'll see how we can make something unique out of it. Give it a new spin, come up with new ways to use it, turn the beat around, all that. Sounds good? Good. Because this is not an interactive platform, and the video is already done. So when I think of bards, I think of... <laughs> Bard is a class for attention seekers and middle children. They cast spells using their pure, raw charisma through performance, like if Harry Potter was a theater kid. In the battlefield, a bard's role is harder to pinpoint than more straightforward classes like fighter or cleric. Bards will rarely match the damage-dealing potential of rogues or barbarians, as they lack the edge, or have one too many brain cells, allegedly, and their raw healing abilities are lesser than clerics. But they make up for it for being what in the industry we call a duck. This bad boy can swim, walk, and fly, but can do any of the three very well. And we love it for it. Bards are versatile, which means that a good bar player can adapt to many different situations, and they take the role of support in an interesting direction. Bards have healing spells, but they get a ton of utility and debuff spells, and, most importantly, the ability to... Inspire. Inspiration is the class resource for the bard and its trademark ability. They use their performance to inspire another party member, to give them a boost to their attacks or saving throws so they can be useful while the bard just... vibes? I don't know what a bard does. This allows them to support the party and hinder the enemy with their debuff abilities. Or they can hinder the party just by virtue of being a bard. <laughs> There is an area where bards take the cake above all classes, and it's outside of combat. Yes, that scary part of the game where you're supposed to talk to people and pay attention to complicated things like words, plot, or the dreaded puzzle. <laughs> bards are what is often referred to as a skill monkey, a monkey that has gained sentience after sitting through one too many Skillshare ads. Bards get... um, hold on, let me crunch the numbers. Um, yeah, approximately 3,000 skill proficiencies and half of that in expertises. Which is a fantastic way for your DM to want to speak to you after the game, because you kind of insisted on rolling every single skill check during the whole session. Bard subclasses, or Bard colleges, because what former and current liberal arts students needed was a constant reminder of their student loans in their fun, whimsical fantasy game. Lean on the versatility inherent in the class. Some give the bard more spells, some give more damaging abilities, and some give new uses to their trademark ability. Inspiration. Let's look at a few. The College of Lore lets you live the fantasy that spouting fun facts and random pieces of information is in any way charismatic. Their whole thing is adding more spells for you to play with and turn the bard away from ever being anything but a full spellcaster. They also get the best use of bardic inspiration, cutting words. You! Which lets you inflict a very sizable debuff on any enemy attack, damage, or ability checks by, once again, letting you live the fantasy that you can come up with a savage comeback on the spot. The College of Valor, or the College of Swords, if you like good flavor and eating through your inspiration in three turns, turn the bard into a martial damage dealer in a process that experts like to refer to as certification. They boost the martial damage dealing capabilities of the bard, making them dex-based fighters that weave martial attacks and spellcasting together. If you are a Final Fantasy fan, you will recognize this as being very similar to the Red Mage, the best thing to come out of any gaming franchise ever. F you fight me. So that's cool. And finally, the College of Eloquence, brought to you by the people who read Greek mythology books during Rhesus and Tumblr Witches. The College of Eloquence doesn't switch anything up, and instead focuses on playing to the existing strengths of the bard. This subclass buffs your inspiration until it's just plain scary, makes a DM cry every time they ask for a charisma check from you, and makes you feel like everyone is relying on you at all times to do the things they want to do. Can you guys tell this one is my favorite? Of course, there are many others. The College of Glamour. <laughs> the College of Creation. The prophecy is true. And the weird one. We don't talk about them. And this is all well and good, but what if we gave it a new twist?
So you want to make a bard. Only good choices today. Bards are charisma magic users that use performance to cast spells. But even though the most common idea of a bard is of a weird horny little man singing with a dumb looking guitar, they don't have to be that. Here at D&D with a Twist Industries we are not in the business of peddling basic. <laughs> what unifies all bards is their use of performance. But as we've seen with some of the subclasses, that performance can be anything. It doesn't have to be music or hell, it doesn't even have to rely on sound. And yes, I know that some of the abilities like Song of Rest imply that the class is indeed about music, but I've never learned how to read, so that's not gonna stop me. And two, we have official subclasses that don't have anything to do with music or sound. So calm down. So with all that in mind, let's give the concept of Bard a twist and come up with some different Bard concepts that you can use in your games as a DM or a player, I don't care. Okay, first one. What about a College of Lore Bard whose performance is conveying complex information in a clear and digestible way, like a teacher? Let's say that her name is Nissa, and she's very much not a smooth talker, but she's really good at gathering information, writing essays, and explaining her logic. So, in colloquial terms, a nerd. Let's say that the way that she inspires her party members is by pointing out the enemy's weak points and how to best defeat them or by coming up with plans through her keen analytical mind. In combat, her playstyle is about debuffing her enemies with her expanded Lord Bard spell list, opening them up for her party members attacks that she then buffs by using her inspiration to point out the chinks in the enemy's armor. Neat. Let's give her a high charisma and a high intelligence. And let's add a crippling fear of being all theory and not being able to apply her knowledge in the heat of battle. And let's add an overbearing parent that sent her to Bard College with the hopes that she will one day live up to their impossible standards. So let's give her a motivation of traveling the world to write the first encyclopedia of anything and everything. And she's done. Okay, for the next one, what if we take that not at all tired, not cliched in the slightest, very much relevant and still funny meme of the horny bard and actually make something interesting out of it. So bards tend to lack the characteristic edge of other classes. So let's sprinkle it here. And done. Ah, perfect. Alcott, our bard here, had a rough childhood growing up as an orphan in Fantasy City, working title, which is what led him to become part of an infamous band of assassins for hire. His modus operandi was to enter the houses of nobles as a performer and commit some fun murders when he got in. Now, when he was working as an assassin, he fell madly in love with, um, um, sexy partner, working title, and together they did many dangerous and sexy missions until one day, sexy partner, working title, betrayed him and left him to die alone. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. So he fled the band of assassins who are now after him because he deserted and is now traveling the world as a wandering minstrel. He just goes around flirting and f***ing anything that moves, but freezes and is made really, really uncomfortable by any form of emotional closeness or anything remotely resembling love because baggage. Give him high charisma and a high dex, make him a whisper bard or a volor bard if your DM doesn't know what a social encounter is, <clears throat> and done. This bad boy can fit so many trust issues in it. Okay, for the last bard, what if we pick a type of performance that is basically never used in bards at all? Let's pick one that would be cool to roleplay in battle. I choose dance. Wouldn't it be cool to make a bard that uses dance as their performance and have the playstyle be all about their positioning in the battlefield? They could have a dance partner ability that boosts a party member they select as their dance partner. They could stop enemies in their tracks with their dancing, and they could be more powerful if they attack when they're dancing. Well, you're in luck. I just created a whole bard subclass centered on dancing just for this video. I even drew the whole illustration. Wait, I gotta do that. One second. Ugh. 
Wow, I did it. So yeah, you can download the entire subclass and rules on how to use fans as weapons. Everything is in the description box below for the very low, low, low price of free. Okay, we have our nerd bard, we have our horny bard, and now we have a whole subclass for dancer bards. I would say we've given bards a fun twist. See, it's that easy. It was very much not easy, please. It took a long time, please, please be kind. I hope you like this whole D&D &D with a twist thing. I plan on doing a bunch more, and I think that next time we won't be doing a class. We'll be tackling something different, something monstrous. Something more evil. Go ahead and take a look at the free bard subclass we did here in the video description. That'd be very nice of you, and I would appreciate that a lot, if only to see the high res pick of the art. And I'll see you around. Oh, and please feed the algorithm by leaving a comment or a like. That would be nice of you. I would appreciate that a lot too. <laughs> That'd be very nice. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very, very new at this. This is my very first video. So uh, sharing it with friends, posting it on places, that'd be fantastic. All right, love you, drink water or something, feed your pets, take care of your children. All right, bye-bye now, bye. Mwah!